Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 913 for the 24th of August. So, um, there will not be any information from the 25th of August. Nothing today. So, so this is a summary, okay? Summary only happens when everything is over. So anyway, we're going to go into the the cursed Sumi region. So on uh, the Sumi region, so I want to first highlight before we go into the cursed front, um, there is an intensifying shelling in the northern part of Sumi, particularly over the this uh, tri-border tri of Brian's curse and Sumi. There is shelling being reported in Druzba, Druzba, Chuihivka, Svetsa, Yampil, Pervomaisky and Klukiv. And uh, this is very uh, reminiscent of the shelling before the curse offensive happened. So the, there might be some grouping of forces within this region. And, and it looks like the Ukrainians may be planning an offensive in this region, given the, the level of shelling. Previously, we have all this shelling over in the Sumi region before the Curse Offensive. And there was, no, it was like, no, oh, there's a lot of shelling. No, then eventually the Curse Offensive happened. So the, it could be a case where the Ukrainians are now you know, gathering forces, uh, seeing the success that they have uh, over in the Curse region and the fact that the West said nothing. Okay, the West did not say it, no or it's not okay. They basically swallowed it, swallowed it and accepted that it is okay for the Ukrainians to do this. So previously, they were totally adamant that the Ukrainians cannot or should not attack into Russia. And now they just keep quiet. So it, embod it probably emboldens the Ukrainians to do more of such incursions. And which is why we then saw this uh, fighting at the Zarya crossing, rather not really fire fighting, but it's more like the Russians giving a warning shot, saying that the Russians in, is in this region and they will they are ready to meet these Ukrainian forces. But the intensifying shelling also means that the Ukrainians continues to regroup and gather more forces into this region. So I believe that uh, my hypothesis is that there is going to be a push down this highway towards to this oblast, which I cannot remember the name, um, or oil oil uh looks like this incursion might actually uh happen soon so this is a uh this is a tri-border region and and there is this highway leading all the way to audio so this is going to be interesting and this will also known um allows this offensive towards rylas to potentially happen uh because once the russians are distracted northward then they can actually continue on their original plan of attacking Rylas. So this is also a possibility from the Klukiv region. So we will definitely have to continue to watch this region as uh, the Ukrainians may be going to start something new. Because remember this kind of cluster, previously the cluster was here. The clusters were, were here. So, and that, that cluster now resulted in a curse offensive. We're probably going to see another offensive, uh, which... I don't I'm not gonna give you a name first because I have not I'm not sure where is the target for sure. Because they might be going for Brian's, but maybe they're going for Oreo. So let's see how this develops. So uh other than that, uh we we still have all the shellings within the region. Uh not very, very particularly important per se. It's just generally you know the expected places and the Glushkovo uh, offensive have not happened as the Ukrainians are still stuck in the Snagos region. So over in the western uh uh, western flank, the Ukrainians are still at, trying to attack towards Krasno Otobilsky as well as Komarovka and Krem, uh, Kerenevo. They still have not been able to get through the Russian lines around here and, and the Russians are either counter-attacking or shelling the Ukrainians in this salient. The Ukrainians have this basically this like a Bout in within this region and uh, Panovska, Snagos, Vishnevka, the Krasnodarovsky is all under Russian attack. So we we shall continue to monitor and see how this goes. Russian forces are also shelling Lyubimivka. Probably this is the forward operating position for the Ukrainians to reinforce and resupply uh, the actions in this uh, southern western flank. Ukrainians are also attacking uh, Kremlyony. 
Kremiano, Kremianoi, and uh, so the Russians are still holding this position. Ogovka went quiet. There is no information about this, and there is some kind of uh, like a uh, fighting being reported at Krylenkoe, uh, by the Russians. Uh, so let's see how this develop. I should drag this here a bit. It looks very off center. So. And uh, yeah, I don't want to talk too much about this Krolenkoye part first, uh, but because it's more related to the eastern flank. So, but let's see how this goes. The there's Charling reporter just off the border at Zuravka. Uh, this is probably some uh, some forward position for the Ukrainian attack in the now Vinnytsia uh, Zapne, uh region. Northern flank, there is nothing. The Ukrainians no longer have a presence or they are no longer taking actions in the northern flank we haven't had anything since the 21st of august that's already four days so uh is and i think skrilevka is 22nd this 21st yeah there is not much actions for the past three days three three four days so it's getting a bit uh suspicious uh if the ukrainians are even still in this position so the russians uh and the ukrainians are still fighting in this uh let me see if the Okay, so in the in the east eastern flank, and the Russians are like I mentioned just now attacking in the region of Krylenkoe, and they are clashing the Ukrainians over at Malaya Loknia. The Ukrainians are still conducting their offensive and operation against Malaya Loknia. They are also still continuing the attack against uh, Chikaskoye Parashnoye. Ukrainian forces are geolocated within it, but uh, based on information from the Russian side, uh, they are still holding uh, Chikaskoye uh, Parashnoye region. So, and uh, there is also attack or shelling of Yuzhny, uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. So, this is the current uh, strategic situation or tactical situation, if you like, uh, over at this eastern flank. It doesn't look very east, I understand, you know, but it's okay, you know, because I call the shots. So, uh, we go down to the Suja sector. At the Suja sector, uh, the Russian forces are attacking Ukrainian forces over at Mihailovka. Ukrainians are still trying at Ruskaya Koropelka. And uh, they, 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 the Ukrainian forces are also geolocated in the north of Chukaskaya Konopelka as the Ukrainians try to find a new direction. So they are trying to break through this country, uh, countryside region, heading to the high, uh, to this railway and probably try to attack Ruskaya Konopelka maybe in a different region or they are just going to go further which is also a possibility. Ukrainian forces are getting FPB drone strikes uh, within Sujia region. So that's about it from this uh, region. As you can see, nothing changed, uh, generally speaking. Over in the southern flank, in the southern flank of the Kurs front, uh, Russian forces are conducting their counteroffensive against uh, Plekovo as well as at Borki. Ukrainian forces are counterattacking at Borki and uh, and the Ukrainians has started attacking Spanoi, the first attack in uh, four days. So this is interesting. The, so the Russians are holding the line around here. They, there is rumors of Russians have already captured Borki, but according to the pro-Russian sources, there is no uh, evidence tentatively to, to confirm this piece of rumor. So that's all from the southern flank. And as you can see, the cursed front has died down quite a lot and uh, is is giving me uh, the Kharkiv offensive vibe. So anyway, like I said, the shelling has begun around here. Who knows? We're going to have more and more front lines in the north. So moving into the... Oh, okay. Before we go into the Kharkiv front, other than shelling reported in Sumi and this uh, Vukinia, Su uh, Serovatka region, the Russians attacked Ukrainian forces over at um, Hrabivsky. So, or Hrabovsky. Actually, why did I write beef? You know? are both gay uh they are both gay so uh, at the both gay uh russian forces attack in this region here it could be just shelling reports but no that's about it from this region but it's interesting that there is some kind of attack in this region we move into the khaki front at the khaki front uh there is fighting only reported over at klipoke as well as it was chance the entire front line has went largely you know still metish so the russians are not going to push uh and the ukrainians has given up trying to push them out so that is exactly what's happening around here as i mentioned the russians are pretty happy with their lines because the lines uh make geographical sense that make tactical sense and i mentioned this you no know, long long time ago uh, if you have been following you probably already heard me talk about it so, 
and the east the ukrainians that continue to uh fight all the way and keep going into the kill zones and um and now i believe that they have exhausted the capabilities around here or they just realize that it's just pointless and they rather focus the effort over in the curse front which makes perfect sense as well so this front has basically went quite uh pretty quiet it's almost like the kupian's front kind of situation over here over in the kupian's front uh as we mentioned kupian's front russian forces are attacking at sinkivka petropolivka and stepova nova Selivka. there is some geolocation of ukrainians are uh, getting attacked by russian airstrike in the region of Petropolivka, but uh, that's about it as usual. I don't expect any changes around here. Over in the Pischani region, Russian forces are attacking towards Klushkivka as well as Krulekivka, and there is fighting reported as Demakivka. So, uh, generally, we are still thinking, we still believe, actually, it's I still believe, but no, I like to say we, no, we still believe that uh, the target is going to be Senkove and the Krylakivka crossing. But let's see, let's see how this develop. Now, uh, over, for going further south, over the Svetovay front, uh, we have fighting reported to us, uh, Drusilevka and Mikievka. Um, so, nothing much to talk about. There is still no confirmation of Russian success over in Mikievka. The, this battle is very underreported. Not much information about it. Over in the Kremina front, the Russian forces are attacking towards Novo Sadove, Torske, as well as Dibrova. So, pretty much stalemate in this region here as well. We move into the Sivas front. At the Sivas front, Russian forces are attacking at Spurne. This is the Sivas offensive, Vimka, and Perezny. Uh, so, and there is a geolocation of uh, Russians bringing in the TOS as well as. Uh, airstrike in this region so the TOS is the thermobaric uh, rockets and uh, this basically and once it lands everyone dies there no all, so all living things die there so it is quite a scary weapon and the bringing of the TOS means that the Russians may be going to start a real push uh, in this region here uh, maybe maybe because usually TOS is a very uh, offensive orientated weapon uh, in the sense that it helps to clear out the enemy fortifications that allows the Russian ground troops to move, move in. And, but who knows? Who knows? Because the Russians, sometimes they just want to hold a certain line. And we move into the Bakhmut front. At the Bakhmut front, uh, on top of the fighting reported at Vimka, uh, so we go in the northern flank first. So other than the attack in Vimka and Perezne, it seems like the, the same force is continuing to attack at Vesukivka, Zelenyansky, uh, Harakhorivka and Kalinina and this feels very offensive-ish like there is something big is currently happening particularly I would say that the line at Vesukivka and Zelenyansky is particularly um, dangerous like I analyzed a long, long time ago I've done an analysis video on this how you no, know, this is actually a weak spot for the Ukrainian forces. Whether the Russians really want to push right now is remains to be seen, because um, the hypothesis that we have, and echoed by quite a number of people, probably mostly pro-Russian, <laughs> the is that the Russians are are just attritioning the Ukrainian forces, and they are just holding this front line and just slowly attritioning away. The, my theory is that the Russians do not want to push because. The more places you fight, the more places get destroyed. That is the unfortunate, unfortunate truth. And if the Russians want to uh, annex all this region and they have to invest money to rebuild, then the ideal is not to fight in too many of these places, particularly big cities. So, um, and another thing is that able to hold the line means that the Ukrainians have to stretch their logistics. So this is... Uh, no, Sivas Front is one of the furthest point, uh, in the furthest east point in the Ukraine war. So there is uh, no reasons for the Russians to close up that gap. It's not really that difficult. They, like this area here is actually much more easier to fight than you know, the New York Front or the ADFK Front. This is way more fortified. But somehow they are not choosing to attack here. They're choosing to attack in other places where they have more strategic uh, objective to go for so there's something to to take note of oh uh, there is also fighting reported at chastifia no so that's it in the southern flank uh, there is fighting reported uh, towards toposhki pratashne as well as dilievka very very weird 
uh, stuff because we have no updates regarding the front lines uh, that would suggest that the fightings are in these regions here and they are all very far away from front lines so let's wait and see i'm not sure if there is a real change of front line or though or this is just you no know, they're talking about a general direction that the russians are attacking towards we move into the new york front at the new york front the russian forces are continuing their uh, offensive in Pivnishne, Torex, Torex actually in two different directions, in Net Netipivka and New York and Alexandropil. And the most interesting thing is New York. <laughs> After my sit rep, I complained, now I say that, you know, oh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry never mentioned New York anymore, but they mentioned Netipivka. So in this report, you know, in this uh, yesterday's Ukrainian uh, 4 p.m. report, they dropped the word New York. Maybe they're watching DPA, no? I don't know, maybe. Or maybe I'm just you not know, too self-conceited. <laughs> anyway, Russian forces are geolocated, uh, taking a bit more grounds in this region here. Uh, this is where the pharmacy joke came in. Uh, there's a pharmacy here and they're geolocated there. So I so would joke that you no, know, in the front line, you just report that they're buying medicine. Um, which, yeah. So the Russian forces are geolocated just off the, the the small hill as well the castle and russians are still trying to clear up pivnishne and the fighting of course is within thorax already in a pincer of attack so let's develop uh, let's wait for this to develop no more news regarding new and uh definitely the trigger usually will be a your location a video so let's wait and see over at the pokrov sector or the pokrov front at the pokrov front the russian forces are attacking as usual, Nelip uh, towards Zelenepole, Vos Devizenka towards Marolubivka, uh, uh, Horodivka, Novo Horodivka, at uh, Marin Marinivka towards Mihailivka in southeast of, you no, know, on the eastern part of Mihailivka, towards Kalinove, Petishe, as well as on the opposite shore of Skushne. As you can see, this entire front line is extremely hot, particularly. Over in the in this uh, Korodivka all the way to the uh, Kalinovay region, this entire region is the hottest, and the Russians are making the ma major push because these are the directions uh, that will be pushing to a Pokrov. Uh, from this area, these are the two Pokrov direction, and the one pushing south is to close up the Nevelsky problem. So there is this Nevelsky region here, and the Russians have. A lot of trouble trying to conquer this place, this place and uh, going south fighting it within this chain of settlements would basically collab collapse the Nevelsky uh, defense line. So uh, into, uh, the Russians have expanded their control over in Novo Horodivka as they have captured a lot of this uh, higher, higher rise building. All the higher buildings are now under Russian control, basically half of it. The Ukrainians are still holding the other half. And the uh, geolocation of uh, the front line of a Russian Ukrainian tank getting hit by the RPG uh, do do suggest that the intensity of the fighting over here is nowhere near the level of Bakhmut. So, so this is not Bakhmut. Uh, this the Russians are conducting an offensive in this region, pretty much like most of the other settlements. I said that Novohorovivka uh, Novohorovivka is a little bit bigger. Um, there's no news regarding the battle of. Uh, Horodivka. There is no location of an air strike, oh sorry, a Russian strike on the APC. Uh, over in the Mihailivka region, uh, the Russians are geolocated at a gas station, which is the other part of the joke of the frontline changes, and the that, that title definitely did not work well <laughs> in terms of click through rate because you know the, the long time viewers will get a joke, you know, but you know, they know why I, the, 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 the thing I'm going for, but yeah, maybe I'm not gonna get you know, some of this, you no. Know, you no know, people who are not so familiar with DPA, they were like, "What the hell is this report?" So anyway, the Russian forces are attacking the, in this region, heading to the south of uh, Marilinivka, Marilinivka, and uh, basically securing the highway would be pretty essential because there is another gas, gas station around here. So anyway, uh, I'm just joking about the gas station, please. So uh, over at the no, no, please, no, don't please. So over in the Kalinove region, Russian forces have basically secured huge amount of grounds opposite the Skushne region and um, this allows the Russians to then strike the Isthmus and uh, basically close the chapter over on that side and uh, 
and with this incursion over on the western part of Kalinove, uh, Kalinove is also in danger of getting enveloped uh, from two sides. So the, this is, uh, yeah, not defendable. I don't think Kalinove is a defendable place. So let's see how this goes. Uh, I think the defendable place is this area from uh, Memri, Memrik along the forest line all the way to the heavy, heavy entrenchment around the Isthmus and uh, Kalino, uh, Kalifka. I think this is a good defense line along the highway. I think this is where the Ukrainians should hold the line. So let's see how this developed around this region. Um, moving into the Donetsk front, at, at the, the Donetsk front uh, in the northern flank, uh, Russian forces are attacking Kalilivka. Uh, that's fighting in the region of Krasno, Krasnohorivka and Georgivka. Particularly at Krasnohorivka, the Russian forces are continuing their push towards Hostre, as there is a new geo location of showing Russian progress on the southwestern part of Krasnohorivka, pushing westward along the railway line. So, and uh, once if the Russians just continue to push here, and they they start to you no know, flank south to support the Maximilianivka fighting, the entire region here will be fallen to the Russians because of the envelopment. So we move further south uh, over in the Vodian, Vodian region or Konstantinivka region. So how do I do this? So there is fighting reported in the Konstantinivka. There is fighting reported towards Vodian, at Vodian and at Voleda. Then of course there is the, uh, the intel drop, the mapping drop from the Deep State UA, the pro-Ukrainian side, confirming Russian continued progress towards the highway. I still remember a time where the front line is still far, far away. So it's amazing to see, you know, that the front line have really progressed quite a lot. Uh, given this is one of the, you know, the main, you know, front lines. And uh, there is a new, new uh, settlement that is now being caught into action in the reports is Katerinivka. So this is the first time Katerinivka is really, you know, being reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry to be attacked by the Russian forces. So that means that there must be a Russian attack towards down this, this, uh, this progress. So this is the first part that the Russians actually break the highway. Perhaps the Russians have been going down the valley and actually heading towards Katerinivka. I think this might be the case which is why we are seeing the, the, the name drop for the first time. So moving on to, uh, from this region here, we def this is definitely something to watch uh, for sure, because if the fighting really goes to this area here, the entire strategic picture of this region changes tremendously because the Russians can just bypass Konstantinivka and they'll just, they can just continue to fight, you know, in uh, just island hop away from you no know, troublesome spots you know then force ukrainian withdrawal so that is a possibility so uh fighting at voleda continues to be very fascinating to me i don't i'm not sure you know what is the con the the voleda attacks are i'm really really curious so nothing at the velikan over circus sector we move into the zaporizhia front russian forces are attacking in three different directions at malatomashka uh, novo andreevka as well as shabaki so, and, and this, this region here continues to be also you know, shrouded in mystery. We do not really know what the hell is happening. So like there is always, especially Malatomashka, so much reports about fighting in this region, but we have nothing. There's no frontline changes. Very, very weird. So we move into the Kherson front, the, the Kruzon uh, the, or the Kherson Sun. Uh, the Kherson, uh, we have a lot of shouting reports within this region from both Ukraine and Russian Defense Ministry. This is the first time I did my Ukrainian uh, reports of airstrikes in this region. Um, but I may not do it the next time. Depends. So uh, just there's shouting reporter at uh, Zimivka, Tumarini, Bukhonka, the Tokarevka, I believe this is uh, not Novo Tiahinka and Ivanivka. And this, this I'm covering this partly because there is all these rumors about the Ukrainians planning to start a Zaporizhia offensive again, or uh, or a Kherson offensive, or the entire region. Uh, particularly, uh, there is this rumor about Ukrainian forces over in the Kayamske sector and maybe some other sectors around here. They are planning to push through. Clearly, this is suicide, but. Uh, yeah, so I, I kind of like, you know, just map it in just in case for my own analysis purpose. So maybe they are trying to 
they may even want to push to Novakovka, but you no, know, because of what happened in Krinky, I don't think it's going to work. Um, so anyway, uh, this is going to be a nothing burger. And uh, there is a air there's a missile strike on the Snake Island. So this is post uh, geolocated by military summary. Um, the 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 missile or whatever looks really weird. It looks like a tumbling barrel. And then just the boom. <laughs> so yeah, not important at all. No Snake Island is extremely not important. So anyway, that's it. So this is the summary for the day of uh, 913 for the 24th of August. So depending on what time you watch, you no, know, we will be doing the DPA open mic. So do catch the DP open mic later. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next update.